an illegal gambling operation busted up. How detectives got word about this secret money ring. Plus, the Special Olympics are underway here in San Antonio. We take you out to Morgan's Wonderland for a look at all the excitement. We've got a lot more cloud cover hanging around into the afternoon. What does that mean for your high temperatures on this Friday? And what does the weekend look like? I've got the answers coming up in a bit. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. In just a few hours, Bear County Sheriff's deputies took down what they say was an illegal gambling parlor that had been operating for years now. They seized dozens of eight liner machines, thousands of dollars and even a couple of weapons from a large shed behind a south side home. It was on East Harding Boulevard near Roosevelt Avenue. As Katrina Weber reports, four people are also facing criminal charges. At the start of the workday for most, Bear County Sheriff's investigators are already hours in on a job they had been planning for weeks. They showed up at this home in the 300 block of East Harding after six this morning, ready to break up what they say was an illegal gambling operation in its backyard. They said this place has been actually continuously operating for about 10 years now. Uh, it's pretty well known in the area, so thankfully we were able to get in and get it shut down. Sheriff Javier Salazar says it was operating in a series of sheds separate from the tenants in the home. He shared photos of the hall, as many as 108 liner machines, thousands of dollars in cash that we're still counting. We know that we know for a fact at least one of the bags that we found one bag contained $15,000 in order to get inside. Investigators had to call in a SWAT team. They broke through the fence thinking they'd find an armed guard at the gate. Instead, they say they found weapons. Pulling off this bus took the full might of the sheriff's office and more. At one point, they brought in firefighters to saw into an ATM and safe. Deputies arrested three men on charges related to the gambling and one woman for possession of methamphetamine. Obviously, these locations, sometimes it takes more than once for them to get the message. So we'll see where they go from here. Although he calls this bus a resounding success, Salazar wonders how long its effects will last. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the war in Ukraine, where Russia forces, Russian forces appear to be withdrawing from a few major locations. Now, meanwhile, the Kremlin is issuing a direct threat to Sweden and Finland if they continue to pursue NATO membership. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, some citizens in Finland preparing underground bunkers as Russia threatens possible military action to discourage Finland and possibly Sweden from pursuing NATO membership. Russia's deputy ambassador to the United Nations telling a British podcast the two historically neutral countries could face a military attack if they join the alliance. It means that uh, Finland and uh, Sweden all of a sudden, in, instead of neutral countries, become part of the enemy and, uh, well, they, all, they bear all the risks. He added that NATO troops in those territories could also become possible targets. People would have been much more concerned about two months ago uh, if the Russians had said we're going to do something militarily, but now the Russian military has proven so incompetent and so corrupt that people aren't uh, that worried. Finland, which shares an 800 mile border with Russia, said Thursday it plans to apply for NATO membership without delay. And Sweden has indicated joining the alliance would offer security advantages as Russia continues its assault on nearby Ukraine. New images showing many Ukrainian villages left in ruins after Russian shelling. The school building destroyed in the northern Chernihiv region. Ukraine's President Zelensky calling Russian commanders who ordered the attack on schools simply sick and incurable. Video released by the far-right Azov regiment shows Russian missile strikes continue in Mariupol. The UK Ministry of Defense says in a new intelligence update that Russian troops have suffered significant losses and that Russian forces have failed to make any significant advances despite concentrating forces in the Donbass region after withdrawing and redeploying units from the Kyiv and Chernihiv areas. The war on the ground uh, stagnant and uh, the economy in Russia continues to take a beating and is well into recession. And right now, some relief in Finland after Russia said, despite reports saying that it could cut gas supplies to that country for pursuing NATO membership, the Kremlin has no such plans. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Meanwhile, back here in San Antonio, the Special Olympics are underway. Our RJ Marquez is out at Morgan's Wonderland for a look at this year's competition.
That's right. The action is underway out here at Morgan's Wonderland and the Star Soccer Complex as the South Texas Olympics 2022 Summer Games are now underway. Nearly 2,000 athletes are going to be out here participating throughout the weekend in several events, including track and field. But soccer has already gotten underway. We talked to one of these young athletes earlier this morning about competing in these games. It's a fun environment with all the competition. It's going to be difficult to beat all the other teams, but we're going to try. And along with all the star athletes that are going to be taking part in these games, there's also going to be thousands of coaches, spectators, fans, parents, all sorts of support out here for the Special Olympics Texas Games. Opening ceremonies take place tonight at Toyota Field. It's going to be a lot of fun. Reporting from the Star Soccer Complex on the Northeast side, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Stop the Bleed is having a major event on Thursday, May 19th. It is a training day to help what you might call bystanders, any of us, learn about bleeding CPR. Many people are familiar with CPR to help the heart continue to beat. But bleeding CPR is for an injury situation when someone is bleeding to death so that they can get to EMS or a surgeon in time. That's right, and traumatic injuries are the number one cause of death in people ages 1 through 44. Experts say a person can bleed to death in less than five minutes. Visit our website at KSAT.com for information on this event and how you can help save someone's life. Still ahead on the news at noon as the investigation continues into Abbott Nutrition, the Biden administration scrambling to make sure there's baby formula safe and available to families. The latest details that mothers need to know. And the 2022 NFL schedule is out and the Houston Texans will start with an AFC South opponent right out of the gate. Larry has more later in sports. But first, why Elon Musk says he is putting his plans of buying Twitter on hold. Elon Musk pumping the brakes on his buy to buy his buy of Twitter just a few weeks after agreeing to take the social media company private in a $44 billion deal. Of course, he decided to make the announcement in a tweet saying, quote, Twitter deal temporarily on hold, depending uh, pending details supporting calculation that spam fake accounts do indeed represent less than 5% of users, unquote. Exactly why the estimated number of spam accounts could put the deal on hold is unclear to us mere mortals. But today's news did sink Twitter shares by more than 20% in pre-market trading. And speaking of Twitter, the company is facing staffing shakeups. Two top executives are leaving the company and Twitter also announcing a temporary hiring freeze. Not so good news for those about to take on a student loan. Uh, interest rates on federal student loans are going to be rising by more than a percentage point due to action taken by the Treasury Department. That means college students are going to face the biggest percentage jump in the cost of financing their educations since 2013. The higher rates apply only to loans taken out to pay the 2022 to 2023 academic year and do not apply to existing student debt. The rate hike comes at a time when many college students are already grappling with the highest inflation they've ever seen. And a mega million dollar mishap. A big mistake has cost the mega millions lottery thousands in prize money paid to players with losing numbers. The payouts were made after host John Crow incorrectly read the mega ball number in Tuesday's drawing. The first five numbers were called correctly, but the gold mega ball was a nine. Crow called it a six. There was no winning ticket for the unitized $86 million jackpot, but there are five other prizes for having the correct mega ball number. The New York lottery paid more than $5,500 to incorrect tickets. Uh, to players with incorrect tickets. The lottery then temporarily suspended prize payments. However, New York lottery officials say they've now resumed Mega Million prices disbursements. The estimated jackpot for today's Mega Million drawing, $99 million. Hope to get the numbers right. Okay. Or if they get it wrong, I hope I get the wrong number. Still get paid. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. An August 2021 poll found that 65% of employees surveyed were actively looking for a new job. And if you're thinking about jumping ship, there are some do's and don'ts you might want to consider. Our Sarah Costa explains. 
You have a job, but you want a different one. So how do you go about it? It's just mentally, it's hard, it's draining. You know, at the end of the day, if you're a full-time job, you know, to, because finding another job is almost like a full-time job in itself. Looking for a new job when you have one can be tricky but doable. First, don't tell your coworkers you're searching unless they directly ask you. Many companies will let you go if they know you're looking elsewhere. You can also ask your potential employer to be discreet. If you don't make this clear, word might get around that you're looking for a new job. Also, don't job hunt with company resources. You do not need to rob the company of their time and say, I've got a doctor's appointment. Just be honest. Instead, set up interviews and calls during off hours or lunch and avoid using company email or phone numbers. Be sure to name former employers as references. Most hiring managers understand that you're not comfortable using those from your current company, but do let your references know you'll be listing them and continue to work hard in your current position. I need to do the best I can while I, while I am still here and honor your position. And also too, you don't wanna check out and you don't wanna burn any bridges. Experts say when you plan your job search is also important. August is traditionally a good month to begin looking because the number of active job seekers typically drops, but the number of available positions usually remains steady. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. All right, we're taking a look outside of our live cam and it's kind of cloudy out there. Is that the camera? No, it's not the camera. We've had some high clouds move in from the west Okay. earlier today. Good to know my eyes are not lying to me. They're, they're <laughs> doing good. They're, they're in good shape. And these thin clouds are really acting as a veil and that's going to shave a few degrees off of our afternoon highs. So the clouds will help it not be as hot this afternoon. Now, will that stick all weekend? No, in fact, we'll get closer to 100 over the weekend and into early next week. So we'll enjoy a not so hot afternoon today. I'll walk you through the weather setup coming up in just a few minutes. First, the aquifer today is down three tenths of a foot and in your pollen count looking good here for allergens reported and everything is low. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Some clouds out there, but it's good news. It is. Is there yeah. any Especially chance of rain? Especially if you're working outside. Yes. It, any chance of rain? We know we need it, and those clouds came in quick. But are they going to leave quick is the question. Uh, I think they'll hang around for several more hours. Uh, they may start to break up, and we'll see a little bit more blue sky later in the afternoon. But really what these clouds do for us, unfortunately, don't bring rain to a lot of the area, but it will help to keep our high temperatures down a few degrees. So let's check out the time lapse starting at 6 a.m. And you'll notice as we get into the 7 and 8 o'clock hours, there was some good sun peeking through those puffy clouds. And then as we got closer to 9, 10 o'clock, not as many puffy clouds, but almost a veil of um, like a, a grayish white color moved in. These are high, thin clouds that moved in from the west. And these act as like a veil or a filter between us and the sun. And, uh, you know, it's still pretty bright out there. But that sunshine has to kind of go through those high, thin clouds so it doesn't warm us up as quickly. Uh, and check out the difference that cloud cover has been making west of I-35 under more clouds uh, in the mid to upper 70s, places like Kerrville, Uvalde, Eagle Pass, 73 in Del Rio, also 73 in Rock Springs. Meanwhile, folks east of 35 and 281 are a little warmer, starting to climb into the mid 80s, 86 at Stinson, 87 Divine, 81 here at the airport, 79 in Canyon Lake. So these high thin clouds make a bit of a difference, nothing too drastic, uh, but they make a, a bit of a difference with our temperatures. And that's why as we head into this afternoon, I'm going to bring a lot of us out of the upper 90s and into the low 90s. So it will still be toasty out there but we'll actually be a little bit closer to seasonal norms for this time of year. So if you're up near Bulverde, look for a high in the low 90s around 92, a high around 90 in Bernie, 94 in Castroville, 93 Sabinal, even some upper 80s possible across the hill country um, thanks to that cloud cover. And here's a look at our satellite picture. Again, there's no rain coming out of these clouds. We would like that with the exception 
of way out in Valverde County and west of the Rio Grande. There's some light shower activity north of Del Rio, also Comstock and then west along the Texas Mexico border. The reason these clouds have moved in, there's actually a complex of storms that came out of Big Bend this morning and it fell apart across Valverde County and we're seeing what's left of that along the Texas Mexico border now generally north and west of Del Rio, but all the leftover cloud cover has been moving west to east this morning. So that is why we've had this additional cloud cover move in and again, I expect it to linger through mid to late afternoon as we get closer to about four or five o'clock. We could see the cloud cover break up a bit more such that we start to see more direct sunlight getting through. If that happens, more of us could pop into the mid 90s briefly. And then later on this evening, we'll look back to the west toward places like Del Rio, Comstock, Brackettville, Eagle Pass for some more thunderstorm development across northern Mexico and even parts of West Texas uh, late this afternoon, early this evening. If some storms can get going, they'll try to move east through around and just after sunset. So some of our westernmost uh, communities and counties could see some isolated thunder shower activity this evening. As we get farther removed from sunset, those storms will lose the heat of the day and they'll really fall apart. So we're not expecting any rain or thunderstorm activity to get as far east as San Antonio. But keep in mind if you're out across Edwards County, even parts of Kinney County and most of Alverde County, an isolated strong to severe storm can't be ruled out later on today. This weekend, sunny and hot. We won't be as fortunate with the cloud cover heading into the next uh, couple of days. So enjoy it today because again, we're looking at our highs limited to the low 90s in many spots thanks to these additional clouds. We've got that lunar eclipse on Sunday night. I've got a forecast for that coming up next half hour. So we're missing out on the rain chances there, but we'll take the cloud cover where we yeah, can get it. Looking thanks forward for that, to the lunar eclipse too. Meantime, we're talking mini camp. Yes, Dallas Cowboys start rookie minicamp today, so that means the Cowboys will get their first look at their first round draft pick, number 24 overall, offensive tackle who's going to be playing offensive guard, Tyler Smith, and Lovey Smith, Houston Texans head coach, gives us his thoughts on opening with the Colts. Coming up. I've been anxious to get to work over the past couple weeks since I've been here. I've been back in the weight room, back on the field. So, you know, I'm ready to go for sure. Tyler Smith. This guy's got a lot in his body. Dallas Cowboys rookie Jesus. Tyler Smith is ready to practice and learn the Cowboys way in big board sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Jerry Jones and the rest of the Dallas Cowboys front office will finally get to see their 2022 draft picks on the field. When rookie minicamp starts today, it's scheduled to run today through Sunday. Cowboys first round draft pick Tyler Smith, the boys future left tackle, said he will compete at right guard. And he's ready to work and lead the rookies in minicamp. Uh, you know, I definitely think, uh, you know, I try to view myself as one of the leaders, and I definitely try to conduct myself in, in that way, but I'm not above any one man. Like, you know, this is a team thing. It takes all 11 on both sides of the ball to do what we do. So definitely just, like, you know, gelling myself with the guys, like getting to know them, like this is going to be what I'm trying to focus on for these next couple of days. The Cowboys will kick off their 2022 NFL season when they play host to seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in prime time on Sunday Night Football, September the 11th. This will be Brady's first game back after he unretired during the offseason after just 60 days of hanging up his cleats. Now he's returning for his 23rd season in the NFL, and he will be 45 when he suits up against the boys. This is also a rematch of last year's thriller in Tampa at the Bucs 131-29, where Brady and Dak Prescott combined for 782 yards passing and seven touchdowns. Checking out some key dates for the Cowboys now. Again, September 11th to open up with the Bucks. November 13th, they'll play at the Green Bay Packers. The Giants will visit AT&T Stadium to face the boys on Thanksgiving Day. Christmas Eve, they'll take on the Eagles in Arlington, and the boys will close out the regular season January 7th or the 8th at Washington. After consecutive four-win seasons and kicking off their 2022 campaign with a new head coach in Levy Smith, the Houston Texans will open up their season by
by hosting the Indianapolis Colts in NRG Stadium on September 11th at noon. This will be the third time in franchise history the Texans will open the regular season against the Colts. That dates back to their back-to-back -back meetings in 2010 and 2011 when Houston won both of their home openers against their division rival. So what does Coach Smith have to say about facing the Colts in Week 1? Everything we're going to do is about starting fast and and then it's one thing to uh, get your opponent, but for it to be a division team too, a, di a division uh, rival that dominated us last year. So that should keep us mo motivated, of course, uh, throughout. Um, and that's what it's about really for us as we start building our program about eventually taking back control of the AFC South. Uh, so what a better way to start off the season. Yep, Houston will start off with the Colts at noon on September 11th. December 4th, they will host Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. December 11th, the Texans will face the Dallas Cowboys in Arlington. December 18th, they'll host the Kansas City Chiefs at noon. And on Christmas Eve, the Texans will play at the Tennessee Titans noon kickoff for that one as well. Already getting excited for the NFL season. Pumped I just, up already. I just need the Texans <laughs> to find a way to get some wins okay. and the Cowboys to win in the playoffs. I mean, we got to get something going here in Texas. I agree. It's been too long. It has been. What mothers need to know about the latest efforts to make sure that their baby formula is safe. We want to bring you the latest on the shortage of baby formula here in the U.S. as parents scramble to get a formula for their babies. ABC's Rena Roy has the message the White House has for families as Congress announces a new investigation into the crisis. Coast to coast, many stores look like this. Empty shelves and not much baby formula in sight. It has been very, very hard to find well, formula everywhere. Supply chain issues along with voluntary formula recalls cutting inventory nationwide by more than 43 percent. My sister picked me up some in Arvada yesterday, my dad up in Thornton the other day. ABC's Mary Bruce pressing the White House on when this shortage may end. Do you have a, a, even a rough guess of how long these shortages are going to last? What should parents be bracing for here? Well, we've already seen an increase in supply over the past couple of weeks. We're taking every step to increase that. So our message to parents is we hear you. We want to do everything we can. Federal officials urging states to allow families to use federal aid to buy more brands. They're also taking steps to import more formula and cracking down on price gouging. Not only can we not find it, but when we do find it, it's there's always a 20% markup on it. On eBay, one specialty formula for infants with a milk allergy now selling more than double its normal price. ABC News has learned the House Oversight Committee is also launching an investigation into the shortage. We are taking steps to correct it and we will make sure that it does not happen again. Abbott, the manufacturer of several popular brands, says it could take 10 weeks to get their products back in stores. For now, moms are trying to help each other out on social media, swapping formula, giving away extras and offering to find supply in their areas. Critics say the Biden administration should have acted sooner to address this crisis. With no real end in sight yet, officials are urging people not to hoard. Companies like CVS and Walgreens now limiting purchases to three per customer. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Texas authorities continue looking for a convicted murderer who escaped from a prison bus yesterday afternoon. 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez was serving a life sentence for capital murder when he stabbed a correctional officer to get away. The search area covers a section of Interstate 45 in the Centerville area. In addition to the capital murder conviction out of Hidalgo County, Lopez was convicted for an attempted murder in Webb County. Authorities say if you see this man, do not approach him and immediately dial 911. The Biden administration calling on state and local governments to use COVID-19 relief funds to bolster public safety. During an address later this afternoon, senior White House officials say President Biden will urge officials to use the next wave of funding to curb violence in communities nationwide. These remarks come as the U.S. inches closer to the summer season, which saw a rise in violent crime last year. Joining the president for the speech will be some local mayors and officials who have earmarked funds for community safety. The administration doesn't have a full control of how these funds can be used, but they are advising that they should be used in three main areas, affordable housing, workforce expansion, and violence prevention. 
The United Arab Emirates president, whose modern policies helped transform the country into a regional powerhouse, has died. President Sheikh Khalifa been largely ceremonial. His role has been largely ceremonial since he suffered a stroke and underwent surgery in 2014. His brother, an Abu Dhabi's crown prince, has been widely seen as a de facto leader of the UAE, handling day-to-day -day affairs. The UAE president was just 73 years old. We're keeping an eye on what's going on outside. The sun was kind of hidden away by some clouds, but it looks like it's making a comeback, Katie. Yeah, we've got some high, thin clouds there. That's why it almost kind of looks like maybe the, the camera lens is a little darker, like there's a, a filter on it. It's high, Not thin, Instagram filters, though. Those, no. Are, those no. are disabled. <laughs> yeah, some of those are disabled. <laughs> Mother Nature's filters, not disabled. Uh, 81 at the airport. That was good, John Paul. That made me. Give me. <laughs> Gave me a chuckle. 81 at the airport, and you can see our sensor there is reading mostly cloudy skies. Uh, winds are calm, but we expect to pick up a nice breeze uh, later on this afternoon and this evening. Here's a look at our satellite picture. So unfortunately, there's no rain falling out of these clouds, but uh, they've really filled in nicely from the west over the past few hours, and uh, that is keeping temperatures from climbing quite as fast as they would be if we had a clear blue sky. In fact, Uvalde 76 lost Maple 77 with some uh, slightly thicker cloud cover uh, there west of Highway 281 at the airport. It's 81 down at Stinson. Maybe with a little bit more sun, it is 86, 88 in Pleasanton with some more sun across Atascosa County. Cloud cover is a bit thicker um, along and west of 35, again in places like Uvalde up to Rock Springs and even Del Rio. So this cloud cover will have an effect on our temperatures as we head into the rest of the day. If you missed that last half hour, I'll show you forecast highs for today. We bring them down uh, a few degrees thanks to the clouds. But this weekend, with a lot more abundant sunshine, we crank the temperatures right back up. We also have that total lunar eclipse coming up Sunday night. I've got that forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks for that, Katie. Now, do you ever wake up with stiff joints? Have you ever had that nagging knee or hip pain? Keep going. At the end of, the, <laughs> at the end of a long day? I guess you have. <laughs> I have. Well, maybe you've been told you might have arthritis. Well, you're not alone. With more on that, here's ABC's Justin Finch. New research with the Global Burden of Disease study found that over the last 30 years, cases of osteoarthritis increased almost 80% in the U.S., with more than 50 million Americans currently suffering from the illness. Most of these cases are in the knee, but this kind of arthritis can also affect your hips, hands, and other joints. If you think you may be at risk for osteoarthritis, it's important to maintain a normal weight and keep your muscles strong to help support your joints. Losing just 10 pounds of weight over 10 years decreases your chance of developing osteoarthritis by 50%. If you know this is a problem for you, talk to your doctor about your treatment options. Physical therapy is great for strengthening muscles to offload joint pressure. If physical therapy is hard for you, try at-home exercises. It's important to stay active. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines like ibuprofen or naproxen can help with pain and inflammation, but you should talk to your doctor before taking these regularly as they do have side effects. Procedures like joint injections or orthopedic surgery can also be offered by specialists. Osteoarthritis is very common, so if you are suffering from this, you are clearly not alone. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch. 15,000 episodes later, a decade-old television show, decades-old television show is celebrating another milestone. We're going to take you behind the scenes of General Hospital next. And the UIL baseball playoffs are heating up. Larry has the action, including Canyon and McCullum, coming up in sports. If you're ever wondering why I got into broadcasting and did not become an accountant, this is why. Not an accountant. I didn't become an accountant because I can barely count. <laughs> well, apparently I can't either. But all through college, I was watching General Hospital and missing my accounting class. So listen to this. Don't skip class, kids. Don't, <laughs> no, don't do it like me. They are shooting their 15,000th episode 
and they've sure been through a lot since the show first hit te daytime television back in 1963. ABC's George Pinocchio has more from a special celebration on the set. This is General Hospital, where every day a modern army fights one more battle in man's never-ending war against human suffering. General Hospital has been entertaining soap fans for a long time now. Of course, things were very different back in 1963. A few of the interns are having a get-together tonight, and I uh, thought I ought to be there. Oh, just, uh, doctor. What did you think, girls? What do you think 15,000 episodes of this show signifies to all the fans that have been watching for years? Well, I don't think anybody can believe that it's been on this long. It's quite an accomplishment, isn't it? And it's gone through different generations of people. Jeannie Francis has played the popular character of Laura since she was a teenager. Now she's the mayor of the fictional Port Charles. I'm very happy with how the character has grown and changed. Uh, in the beginning, of course, it, she was very, very vulnerable, and now I focus much more on her strength. We've seen General Hospital age along with us. Different opens, different music, different characters. But drama has always been a staple. Episode 15,000 will focus on Jeannie's character, and it sounds like a good one. It'll be happy, it'll be sad, it'll be dark, it'll be scary, it'll be fun, it'll be thrilling, it'll be exciting, but most importantly, it has almost every single cast member in it. And they showed up for the traditional celebratory cake. We've been here plenty of times in the past, but applauding 15,000 episodes is really something special. How many calories do you think you've eaten by having cake at General Hospital for every milestone? Well, you know, the, the truth of the matter is I don't even touch the cake because I'm, I'm real disciplined. <laughs> the cake today is a sweet reminder that General Hospital is on its way to celebrating another milestone next year when the show turns 60 years old. Watch General Hospital every weekday on ABC. The 15th episode of General Hospital airs June 17th on ABC. In Hollywood, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Katie does not understand. <laughs> there was a time. I think there was a couple of scoffs during I that think story. There were. I think there were. Okay, so Luke and Laura, big deal. Yes, back I knew when that. I was in college. I knew that, and every time it's on in the, if I, you know, work in the afternoon and evening shows, if it's on in the makeup room and I'm in there doing my hair. You kind of get drawn in. I, do, I don't know what's happening, but I, I'm i just like moth to a flame, like, what is this? I was waiting for you to say you just turn it off. <laughs> no, no. No, I get it. It's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. Don't mess with the soaps. Don't mess with people's soaps. Uh, in the falling count today, if you haven't seen this yet, things look good. Molds are still low. We've got low counts of grass, willow, and pigweed in the mix today as well. The aquifer down three tenths of a foot to 645.3. Stage two water restrictions are definitely still in effect for SAWS customers. Another look at what you can expect this weekend and that lunar eclipse forecast coming up in just a few. All right, your time is 12.45 in the afternoon, and the best part is that it's Friday. Yeah. And people are getting ready for the weekend, and we got some cloud cover. And it's away, not as hot. Taking away a little bit of the heat. Yes, but don't let today fool you, because this weekend we're back to way more sunshine, and we'll get our highs back closer to 100 degrees. So the heat is still on, that's for sure. But we do have something else to look forward to this weekend. We've got a total lunar eclipse happening Sunday night. And actually on GMSA at 9 today, I was able to ask a scientist from NASA a few questions about this lunar eclipse. You can find that on KSAT.com. So here's what's going on. The Earth will cast a shadow thanks to the sun. So we've got basically the moon, the Earth, and the sun all in alignment. The moon will pass through this shadow late Sunday night, and that's when the moon turns uh, kind of a red color and it's really cool to see. The only thing is this is happening really late Sunday night for the kiddos. This is going to be past bedtime considering it's a school night. Totality of this eclipse when the moon starts to turn that red color begins not until about 1030 at night and it will last until uh, just before midnight until about 1154 p.m. Now we do have good sky conditions in the forecast for viewing this eclipse. We expect mostly clear to 
to in some spots completely clear skies Sunday night. So that is some good news. You had that to look forward to at the end of the weekend. Before we get there, plenty more springtime sizzle. We'll get our highs back into the upper 90s, closer to the triple digit mark this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. The record tomorrow, 97. That's what we're forecasting for you on Saturday. The record on Sunday, 96. We're going to go 98 Sunday afternoon, so we continue to see our high temperatures above average for this time of year. Average high right now, 86. We're about 10 to 15 degrees above that all the way through the middle part of next week. So springtime sizzles hanging around. Today we catch a bit of a break, though. Good news here on Friday the 13th. We've got this veil of high thin clouds that has moved in from the west, and that's going to keep us from heating up quite as quickly. We're near 80 at the airport now under mostly cloudy skies, so we're not heating up as fast as we did yesterday, for instance, when we were already seeing a lot of blue sky and direct sunlight at this hour. 82 in Comfort, 77 Lost Maple, 76 Uvalde, so off farther to the west of I-35, where the cloud cover is a little thicker. Temperatures there still in the mid to upper 70s. We've got a light breeze here and there. South-southeast winds today will be between about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So. We do have more cloud cover around this afternoon, and you can see here it's moving from west to east across the area. Uh, this is because of a cluster of rain and thunderstorms that fell apart across Valverde County this morning. It's the leftover cloud cover uh, from that cluster of storms that will continue to move east across the area. There's some lingering very light rain just north of Del Rio near Comstock, and then a line of some showers kind of right along the Texas-Mexico border there north and west of Del Rio. Later on today, we'll look back out to the west for potentially some more thunderstorm development. Until then, we'll see this cloud cover continue to filter on through during the day, during the afternoon. Late this afternoon, as it really starts to move off to the east, we could see a little bit more direct sunlight that could warm a few of us up into the low to mid 90s later on this afternoon. And then this evening, we'll have to watch how storms behave across northern Mexico west of the Rio Grande. A few storms could try to wander uh, to the east uh, and affect places like Del Rio, Rock Springs, Brackettville, uh, Eagle Pass there in Maverick County. As we get farther removed from sunset, those storms won't have much energy to work with um, and they'll fall apart. So keep in mind this evening, we'll be watching um, our communities farther to the west, closer to the border for some shower and thunderstorm activity. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies becoming partly cloudy late this afternoon. Look for a high around 93. Elsewhere across south central Texas, high around 95 in Catula, upper 80s, low 90s across the hill country. Rainfall potential over the next week is bleak. Not a pretty sight, not what we need at all. And with the lack of rainfall comes some heat highs uh, near record high territory here through next week, guys. Too much, too soon. Yeah, yeah not that's, ready for that. That's Sunday fun day at 98 degrees is going to be spent inside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, moving over to sports, we got some high school baseball teams swinging for the fences. What do we got to expect? And Reagan did a lot of swinging for the finches yesterday. I tell you what, the Rattlers are always good in baseball. Yesterday in 6A action, they scored early and often against Cedar Ridge. And Randolph track star Taylor Nunez, who's just a freshman, is bringing home a lot of gold medals. Coming up. High school baseball playoffs are in full swing at Northside Field. Class 6A round two matchup between Round Rock Westwood and the Clark Cougars. Top of the first, Westwood's Matt Gola hits a slow grounder back to the pitcher, Cody Edwards, who turns and fires the second for one out. The Cougars try to get the double play at home, but the throw is too late, and Round Rock takes a 1-0 lead. Top of the third, Warriors have runners on the corners again. Ridge Morgan hits it to Matt Gola for the fielder's choice. Another run would score, but the Cougars come back to win at 3-2 with a walk-off RBI triple. To the second round of the 5A baseball playoffs we go. McCollum Cowboys hosting the Canyon Cougars at NEISD Sports Park. Cougars up 5-0 in the second when we arrive and adding on in the fifth with the runner on third. Bryce Garza blasts the pitch to the gap between the center and right field for an RBI single. Next batter, Blake Hollingshead smokes this one past the diving shortstop at 7-0 Cougars, and Canyon wins it 11-0 in five innings. Back to Class 6A, second round action. The Reagan Rattlers dominated Round Rock Cedar Ridge. Top of the first, Britton Moore rips one down the left field line and good for a three-run double, and the Rattlers lead 8-0. They scored 12 runs at the top of the first, and the Rattlers cruise in game one, 19-3. Britton Greer had a two-run shot in that inning as well. The University Universal City Randolph girls took home the class 
3A team state title at the UIL State Track and Field Championships last night. And they can thank a strong core of freshmen leading the way. The headliner was Taylor Nunez, who took home four state titles in her first ever state championship meet. Nunez anchored the Rohawks four by 100 meter relay to victory in 47.01 seconds, then won the 100 meter dash and a state record time of 11.59. She also won the 200 meter dash and the long jump. As a freshman, Nunez has set the bar extremely high. It just makes me want to go even harder. This has definitely made me even more humble because I know there's people coming to take my spot, and I definitely want to let that happen. So I'm just going to keep pushing every single day. This marks the fourth state title for the Randolph girls and their first in 10 years. John Hansen defended both of his state titles yesterday at the UIL Class 3A State Track and Field Championships in Austin. The senior from Great Hearts, Northern Oaks, demolished the field in the Class 3A discus, delivering his best throw right out of the gates at 187 feet, 7 inches. The shot put, a eh, different story. Hansen had to rally in the fourth round, and he won the competition by just two inches at 62 feet, 9 and 3 quarters inches. Hansen admits he was tired after the discus. I knew it's going to come down to the wire like last year's and I had to really dig deep and I had to fix my form midway through and then if I didn't have my coach uh, alongside me that wouldn't have happened so uh, this one is, much, is as much hers as it is mine and uh, I think it happened in pretty dramatic fashion like winning by two inches that's, that's scary <laughs> it's really scary. Big old smile. Look at that gold medal. Hansen is already committed to Purdue for college and he's excited to help the Boilermakers win Big Ten titles. Well, that's all impressive, but I'm more impressed about the underclassman who is the big <laughs> woman on campus right. with four state titles. Good for her. Thanks, Blair. We'll, be, well, actually, we're going to head over to SA Live. Oh, yes. We have robots, robots on the show today. Oh, yes. Uprising of the machines. The San Antonio robotics team is going to an international robotics competition. And I've got team coach Eddie Salcedo here. And this is exciting for these fourth through seventh graders, right? Absolutely. They are uh, Central Region uh, champions. They got second place. This is their third year in a row to be champions. So they've worked hard since August. And next week they go to the Invitational up at Razorback in Arkansas. So they're super excited. Right, Wolfbots? Yeah! All right, let's get your chant. Three, two, one. Work together, never quit. watch some of those robots in action in a bit. But Jen, maybe in a bit of a sticky situation, right? <laughs> exactly, oh, they're so cute, by the way. Uh, yes, it's, it's an American-Japanese donut combination. Rebecca joins me, and we're talking about mochi nuts. You're gonna show me how to glaze this really quick, right? Yeah. So uh, first, you need to mix the icing real quick, just to make sure that there's no like hard things, and you're just gonna put it right in there. You're gonna lift it straight up. Ooh. You're gonna kind of swirl it a little, a little bit. dance. You're gonna shake it <laughs> off a little bit to get that extra icing off. And then you just flip it, and then you just go around, and it's a little bit hard, so we'll just dip it in All again. All right, and we're going to add some toppings to that, have some fun, lots of things coming up on SA Live. Thanks. All right, we do a little bit better in the temperature department today because of the extra clouds, but this weekend will be hot and sunny. Our highs get back closer to the triple-digit mark, even through early next week. Enjoy that lunar eclipse Sunday night. That'll be cool, guys. Thanks for that, Katie. All right, we're going to head over to SA Live where they have your favorite donuts. <laughs> donuts, all the sweets. Can't wait to see it. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, if you're feeling cramped in your space, then we have five ways on how to make a room feel bigger. Plus, not all CrossFit gyms are alike. We take you to a CrossFit gym that lets you find a workout routine that's best for your body. And the Kesa Insider Prize Wheel has a new winner. Today's contestant spins the wheel round and round. Where does it land? Stick around and find out. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, hello and happy Friday the 13th. Whoa, <laughs> yes, that's right. We have robots. Robots on the show today, robots. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm Jen Tobias Chesky, filling in for Mike Osterhage today. <laughs> yes, Happy Friday. Uh, 
We have an uprising of the machines today on the show. The San Antonio Robotics team is going to an international robotics competition. And here to tell us all about the fourth through seventh graders that make up Wolfbots Robotics team is team coach, Coach Eddie Salcedo. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, we're really excited to be here. I know the kids are super excited. They've been working since August uh, on, this, on this project and on the robot. They go to Arkansas next week for the Invitational. Uh, so I know they're they're super excited. They're part of the first organization. Yeah. Um, and yeah, tell us about the Wolfbots. So so the Wolfbots it's fourth through seventh graders, and uh, it's part of the first organization. First organization tries to get STEM in uh, in in exposed to kids, let them learn about science, engineering, technology. But it's also about teamwork. It's about life skills. It's about those things about what can you do for your career, but also just how to manage in working together to solve problems. Uh, you know, again, life, you know, career, or just to help your community. And that's one of the things that they're really passionate about. Yes, and what is that part of the first then? Right? Yes, that's mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. that's one of the, the core values of the first organization. Uh, teamwork, uh, inclusion, uh, problem solving, innovation, all those tools that they use in order to solve, whether it's a robot table or whether they also solve the problem in the community that they found mm -hmm. and they came up with their own solutions so, so they're all important. things that they put together so they all work together as a team to create what we're seeing on yes, this so table cool, right guys. now so what cool. are we seeing so what you're seeing this is the game mat and so they they built the robot from scratch and they their job is to accomplish certain missions so on this table there may be 20 different things that you can accomplish for points and you have two and a half minutes to do as many as you can and so you got to figure out the timing, you got to figure out strategy, um, and then what they do is they, they build the components and the little attachments in order to lift, push, drop off, and they also have to program. And that's the, the tricky part. You got to put all that together uh, in that two and a half minute time frame. All right, so you've been invited to something pretty big next week. What is that? Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Razorback Invitational. So what that is is um, they, they competed here locally and so they were Central Region Champions and from that uh, they got invited by the University of Arkansas by the Engineering uh, College up there to go compete. So there's 80 teams up in Arkansas uh, from around the world, not only in the United States, there's, there's teams that are coming from all over from Korea and, and uh, Israel. Um, and they're gonna compete and they're gonna talk about their project, they're gonna talk about their robot, and they're gonna compete this mat up there. And so represent San Antonio. So. Represent San Antonio and Texas. There's only three teams in Texas <gasps> attending, so it's gonna be great. That is so incredibly cool for you guys, by the way, and your parents are all standing there, and I know they <laughs> are incredibly proud, you guys. That's right, we got some cheering for the parents. Yeah. All right, this is Mary Claire. Mary Claire, what grade are you in? I'm in sixth grade. Sixth grade, okay, so tell me about working on the projects. I was really fun because I love to do research and we learned so much about cargo and the severe weather events that affect it and we were able to hopefully help people in our community that need this help. All right and Alejandro what grade are you in? I'm in sixth grade. Sixth grade also. All right tell me about working on the attachments. Um, so the attachments is a fun and innovative way we can find a way to figure out how to complete these missions in a successful way. All right. Okay, Mary Claire, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an author. An author? We got words right here. We're helping you get on your way. What about you, Alejandro? I would like to be a biomedical engineer. Wow. I don't have anything like that on the show today, but that is awesome. Okay. All right. Now, Penny, Todd, what grade are you in? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. And tell me how you contributed to this project. Well, I helped with the website, which is texaswolfbots.com. There's even a page that has our project and robot notebook, which is everything we did as a team this year. Oh, that is so incredibly cool. What do you want to be when you grow up? A movie director. Oh, we Ooh. got cameras, we got lights, so we're, we're helping you out already. Okay. Very, very exciting. All right, so you said three teams, right? Only three teams? Three teams out of Texas got invited, oh. correct. Wow, yeah. okay. And you've won championships for the past three years and qualified for the world championships, but then what happened? Yeah, so they, uh, back in 2020, you all remember that year, um, they they won, um, and in fact, they got, they got invited to go to Arkansas back in 2020. COVID hit, so it got canceled. Uh, they came back the next year and they won the whole shooting match wow. here in San Antonio and they were champions again. But again, world championships, which they would have gone to, was canceled due to COVID. So this is the first year they said, you know what, we're not done yet. We're excited. And uh, and so they got they got second place championship and, and they get to go back to Arkansas and, and they're going. They're going. What a great yeah. comeback. Woo! Good luck to you guys. Yes. So, yeah, 
they've been working for three years to, to, oh, to get back there. Amazing, so. yes. amazing work. Well, best of luck, you guys. Keep us posted. We're cheering for you. For more information on the Wolfbots robotic team, head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we have provided a link or just scan that QR code on your screen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, because we have robots, robots on the show today, and then you remember all the, you know, like I loved Rosie the robot on the yes, Jetsons, yes. John Five, yes, right? Yes. Okay. So that got us thinking. You know, what chores would you ha want a robot to do for you? Yeah. Oh, that would be a dream. Laundry for me, all the way. Yeah. Wash, Any clean house cleaning whatsoever. <laughs> I just need Rosie from yes, the Jetsons. Yes, yes. You know, meals too. That would be oh. great. Now you're talking. Yes, let us know and tag us at SA Live Kesa on Facebook or Twitter, and we make sure you answer a little later in the show. I mean, I'm interested to see those answers. Robot, I can do taxes. <laughs> oh, I mean, the list goes on there and you on. Go. Okay. All right. Well, if you have a room in your house or apartment that feels small and tight, well, we have some tips for you. Yes, we spoke with a local designer. Five ways to make a room feel larger. Take a look. Smaller space has its perks. A lot of times it's less expensive, there's less to clean, but the challenge can be decorating that smaller space. Today we get help from a local expert on how you can make any room in your home feel larger. Hi, I'm Brandi Sutherland and welcome to my home. I've been doing interior design for about 10 years now and I love designing homes for families. Today I can't wait to bring you into my home to share my design tips and tricks with you. Brandy has five design tips to share today. Some are so simple, yet effective, and it doesn't matter if it's a living room or a powder room. We're pulling in the local experts to share the do's and don'ts on today's Happy Space. And joining me now, Brandy Sutherland, busy mom of three, and you've always had a passion, right, for creating and designing. Where did this come from? It, you know, it really started when I was a kid. My mom would tell you I always had an opinion about my space, and luckily she really let me go with it. When I was in high school, she let me tear out the carpet in my room and totally just go at it, redesign it, and ever since then, it's just kind of been a passion of mine. Well, let me just say, this is a gorgeous setting that you have here, so you're very good at this. Thank you, I do <laughs> I have fun. <laughs> already, and so we're talking space today, and it's always nice to make your space feel larger. Yes. So today you have five tips on how you can make any space space in the home the larger, right? I would say number one, I like to add mirrors to a space. Um, by adding mirrors to a space, it allows like the, the illusion that the room feels bigger. It's reflecting light. So instead of a wall stopping, it almost feels like, you know, the space just continues on and on. So that, for starters, just gives you, you know, a way to make your space feel larger. I think I've been in places where I'm like, wait, does it keep going? <laughs> <laughs> no. So you're right about that. It definitely gives you that depth there. Yes. Um, but also for Furniture, right? Let's talk about that. Yes, furniture plays a big part um, whenever you're designing a space. You know, like we're sitting here in a living room today, and you know, you want to pick out a big anchor piece of furniture. So, one way you do that, you have your big anchor piece of furniture, and then you want to pick some pieces that are lighter, you know, have legs on them, or you know, you see space, you see light under them. Um, that is another way versus having a bunch of very bulky pieces because nothing will make your room look smaller than a bunch of oversized furniture pieces. So balance is the key for sure. Balancing it all out. And yes. then what about color? When it comes to adding some pops of color or no color, no color pops, right. what's best? Well, the lighter the room color, the larger the space is gonna feel. So I definitely aim for, you know, if the space is already small, you wanna go with a, a light color. And I think white's a great, you know, neutral color. And then you mentioned adding a larger piece, which may not seem like it makes sense, right? If you're wanting to make the space feel larger and it's already kind of small. So um, how does that add to it when you do that? So one of the things I like to do is add a large scale like like piece of art, you know, that can really make your space, you know, if you have, like if you want the illusion of having taller walls or, you know, taller ceiling height, bring in a, you know, large piece of art and it really makes your space feel larger. Got it. And then the lighting. First of all, you have great lighting in here. Uh, so how can we play with that um, and make our space feel larger? So whenever you're designing your house, you know, I think it's nice to have, you know, ceiling lighting, you know, can lights. And then on top of that, you can add chandeliers to your space, lamps, floor lamps, table lamps. Um, it's all about layering in the pieces to really give your space that complete feel to make it again feel larger. And you can adjust the lighting, you know, based on, on your 
mood for the day. So it really helps out with designing your space. All right, for more ins inspiration, design tips, and real estate news, visit the Happy Space section on salive.com or snap the QR code that is right there on your screen, and it'll take you right there. Be sure to tune in next week. We'll tell you where you can save money on furniture and home decor. All right, SA Live continues with a local business that will help you find the right colors that match your body best. Plus, it's a Get Fit Friday, and Fiona learns four CrossFit moves with perfect form. Way to go, Fiona.